When Navistar launched the Max Force engines in 2009, it wasn't just a new product. It was the test of a bold idea. Control emissions inside the engine, not with complex after-treatment. Years of engineering hung in the balance, promising to change diesel forever, or reveal the limits of combustion-based solutions. This is the full story of Max Force, from its early roots, through its rise and struggles, to its lasting impact on diesel emissions and the trucking industry's future. Max Force remains a compelling case study on how innovation, regulatory pressure, and real-world challenges collided to shape the fate of technology in a high-stakes industry. The story of Max Force doesn't start with the 2010 emissions crisis. It begins in the early 2000s, when diesel engines were simpler machines operating in a rapidly changing regulatory landscape. The 2004 EPA standards introduced stricter particulate matter limits, prompting manufacturers to accelerate development of diesel particulate filter technology capable of capturing the microscopic soot particles diesel engines naturally produced. These early DPF systems were crude by today's standards, but they established a precedent. Emissions control was moving beyond the combustion chamber. The 2007 regulations pushed this trend further, mandating both particulate filters and more sophisticated exhaust gas recirculation systems. Suddenly, every diesel engine needed complex after-treatment hardware and electronic controls that previous generations had never required. For most manufacturers, this represented an evolutionary step toward even more complex systems. For Navistar's engineers, it reinforced a different philosophy. If you could perfect the combustion process itself, you could avoid the complexity and cost of elaborate after-treatment systems. This early experience with EGR technology gave Navistar confidence that internal solutions could handle whatever emissions challenges lay ahead. While competitors were investing heavily in after-treatment research, Navistar was perfecting the art of exhaust gas recirculation, learning how to manage the thermal and mechanical stresses that came with routing hot exhaust gases back through the engine. By 2007, when the industry faced its next regulatory challenge, Navistar had already committed to the EGR path. The 2010 EPA mandate wasn't a step. It was a cliff edge the industry had to clear in a single bound. Nitrogen oxide emissions had to drop from 1.2 grams per brake horsepower hour to just 0.2 grams, a reduction so dramatic that it effectively eliminated traditional diesel combustion strategies. Every manufacturer faced the same impossible deadline. How do you cut NOx emissions by over 80% while maintaining the power, fuel economy, and reliability that commercial customers demanded? The industry's response revealed two fundamentally different philosophies about emissions control. Cummins, Detroit Diesel, and others embraced selective catalytic reduction, accepting the complexity of DEF injection systems and SCR catalysts in exchange for the ability to optimize engine combustion for performance and efficiency. SCR technology had proven itself in European applications, where established DEF infrastructure and shorter operating routes made the additional complexity manageable. Navistar chose the opposite path, doubling down on advanced EGR technology that promised to solve emissions problems inside the combustion chamber rather than downstream in the exhaust system. This wasn't just an engineering decision. It was a philosophical statement about how diesel engines should evolve. Dan Eustian, Navistar's CEO, positioned advanced EGR as complexity hidden inside the block rather than scattered throughout the truck, eliminating DEF tanks, injection systems, and the logistical challenges of maintaining fluid supplies across vast fleets. That choice forced everything around the engine to change. Most EGR setups lived around 15 to 20 percent recirculation. Navistar aimed to nearly double that, roughly 35 to 40 percent, and rewrote the engine's thermal reality, fundamentally altering the combustion process to reduce peak temperatures where NOx formation occurs. The science was sound. NOx forms at combustion temperatures above 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and diluting the intake charge with inert exhaust gases could keep temperatures below that threshold. But the engineering consequences were staggering. Recirculating up to 40% of the engine's exhaust output meant redesigning every heat-related system. Cooling systems required massive radiators and EGR coolers larger than entire automotive cooling systems. 
Turbocharging demanded variable geometry systems with precise electronic control to manage the complex airflow dynamics. Even basic engine components like cylinder heads and pistons needed reinforcement to handle the thermal stresses and corrosive effects of high-rate EGR operation. The development program consumed enormous resources and established partnerships that would define Max Force technology. Honeywell supplied the sophisticated variable geometry turbocharger systems that could provide the precise boost control advanced EGR required. Modine Manufacturing developed the massive EGR coolers that would become both the enabler and the Achilles heel of the system. Bosch created the engine control modules needed to manage the complex interactions between EGR flow, turbo boost, fuel injection timing, and thermal management in real time. The MaxForce family that emerged from this development effort spanned the entire commercial diesel market. The MaxForce 7, a 6.4-liter V8, targeted medium-duty applications where stop-and-go duty cycles and lower power demands created more manageable thermal conditions. The MaxForce DT covered the 9.3-liter segment for regional hauling and vocational applications. At the top, the Max Force 13 represented Navistar's flagship technology for Class 8 highway applications, a 12.4-liter inline-6 designed to compete directly with Cummins ISX-15 and Detroit's DD-15. Each engine shared the core advanced EGR philosophy but adapted it to different operating requirements. The Max Force 7's smaller displacement and lower power output reduced thermal stresses, making it more suitable for delivery trucks and service vehicles that rarely sustained high power operation for extended periods. The Max Force DT occupied a middle ground, handling regional freight operations where thermal loads were significant, but not as extreme as long haul highway service. The Max Force 13 faced the most demanding application, sustained high power operation at highway speeds, often while pulling 80,000 pound loads up mountain grades. This engine had to deliver 475 horsepower and 1,850 pound-foot of torque, while managing the extreme thermal conditions created by 40% EGR recirculation rates. The engineering challenge was unprecedented in diesel engine design. While Navistar perfected advanced EGR, competitors pursued fundamentally different architectures. Cummins ISX-15 with SCR could run hotter, more efficient combustion cycles because NOx reduction happened downstream in the SCR catalyst. The engine itself operated with conventional EGR rates of 15 to 25 percent, reducing thermal stress and mechanical complexity. Detroit Diesel's DD-15 followed a similar approach, leveraging parent company Daimler's extensive European SCR experience to optimize engine performance while relying on after-treatment for emissions compliance. MaxForce moved the emissions burden inside the block. SCR Pier shifted much of that burden downstream. MaxForce engines required massive cooling systems to handle the heat loads from high-rate EGR operation. SCR-equipped competitors could use smaller, lighter cooling systems because their engines generated less internal heat. MaxForce turbochargers needed precise variable geometry control to manage complex airflow patterns. SCR engines could use simpler, more robust turbocharging systems because their combustion processes were less sensitive to precise air fuel ratios. The thermal budget comparison revealed the fundamental challenge Navistar faced. A MaxForce 13 at full power had to dissipate not only the normal heat generated by combustion, but also the additional thermal load from recirculating 40% of its exhaust output. The EGR cooler alone had to handle heat loads equivalent to a large automotive radiator, while the main cooling system managed the increased cylinder head and block temperatures created by the altered combustion process. Navistar's certification strategy relied heavily on EPA's averaging, banking, and trading program, which allowed manufacturers to earn NOx credits by exceeding emission standards in earlier years. These banked credits provided crucial regulatory flexibility, allowing Navistar to continue selling engines that might not meet 2010 standards in all operating conditions, while competitors were forced to achieve full compliance immediately. And when those credits thinned in 2012, 
Navistar relied on the EPA's per-engine non-conformance penalties to keep EGR-only engines moving while the SCR pivot took shape. The certification process itself revealed the gap between laboratory testing and real-world operation. Max Force engines passed the federal test procedure, supplemental emission test, and not to exceed protocols under controlled conditions, demonstrating that advanced EGR technology could achieve required NOx reductions in steady-state testing environments. But cell tests couldn't fully mimic stop-and-go heat soak, long-grade poles, or real-world soot loading, exactly where MaxForce met its breaking points. Fleet customers initially embraced the MaxForce promise with enthusiasm. The operational simplicity argument was compelling. No def tanks to freeze in Canadian winters, no additional fluids for drivers to monitor, no complex after-treatment systems that could fail in remote locations. Major fleets like Schneider National and J.B. Hunt expressed strong interest during the development phase. Appreciating the promise of conventional maintenance procedures without after-treatment complications, early production MaxForce engines performed acceptably in controlled fleet testing, where operating conditions could be managed and maintenance schedules optimized for the technology's requirements. Navistar's own test fleets reported reasonable performance and fuel economy, while the engines consistently met EPA certification standards in laboratory retesting. But widespread commercial deployment in 2010 and 2011 revealed the fatal flaws in the advanced EGR approach. The extreme thermal stresses that were manageable in controlled testing proved devastating in the chaotic reality of commercial trucking. EGR coolers, subjected to constant thermal cycling uh, between ambient temperatures and 1,000 degree exhaust gases, began developing stress fractures that could cause catastrophic failures without warning. Out on real routes, the data stopped being theoretical and started showing up on shop whiteboards. The high EGR rates created more soot production than conventional engines, requiring more frequent and fuel-intensive regeneration cycles that generated additional heat and consumed precious fuel. Mountain-grade operations revealed another critical weakness. A driver hauling freight through the Rockies found his Max Force 13 entering D-rate mode on steep climbs, automatically reducing power to prevent overheating as the cooling system struggled to manage the combined thermal loads from high-power operation and advanced EGR recirculation. What should have been routine grade climbing became an exercise in thermal management. Hot climate operations proved equally challenging. A fleet operating in the southwest discovered that their Max Force-equipped trucks couldn't maintain highway speeds during summer afternoons when ambient temperatures exceeded 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The cooling systems that looked adequate on paper couldn't handle the combination of high ambient temperatures, sustained high power operation, and the massive heat loads from advanced EGR operation. The turbocharger systems proved equally vulnerable to real-world conditions. Honeywell's sophisticated VGT systems, while capable of precise boost control, were sensitive to carbon buildup from the high recirculation rates. Actuator mechanisms that controlled variable vane position would stick or fail, causing dramatic power loss and potential engine damage. Unlike traditional fixed geometry turbos that could tolerate contamination, MaxForce turbo systems required precise functioning to maintain the airflow balance critical for advanced EGR, making them especially vulnerable to soot buildup and actuator failures. By 2012, the problems were undeniable across all MaxForce family members though the severity varied by application. The Max Force 7 in medium-duty service experienced fewer catastrophic failures due to lower thermal stresses and less demanding duty cycles. Stop-and-go delivery operations didn't generate the sustained, high-power conditions that overwhelmed the cooling systems of highway engines. However, even medium-duty applications suffered from increased maintenance requirements and reduced reliability compared to conventional engines. The Max Force DT occupied a middle ground, with regional hauling operations experiencing significant problems, but not the complete system failures common in long haul highway service. The 9.3 liter engine's lower power output and intermittent high load operation created manageable thermal conditions in some applications while proving inadequate in others. The Max Force 13 bore the brunt of the reliability crisis. Long-haul highway operation demanded sustained high-power output under varying conditions that exposed every weakness in the advanced EGR approach. EGR cooler failures, turbocharger problems, and chronic overheating 
became endemic across the Class 8 fleet, creating warranty costs that threatened Navistar's financial stability. Warranty expenses exploded from typical levels of 2 to 3% of revenue to over 6%, with max force related claims driving the majority of the increase. Engine replacements became common as the fundamental design limitations of advanced EGR became apparent. Fleet defections accelerated throughout 2012 and 2013, with major customers like Schneider National publicly announcing their decision to stop purchasing international trucks with max force engines. The engineering post-mortem revealed that the 35 to 40 percent EGR rates required for EPA 2010 compliance created operating conditions that exceeded the fundamental limits of diesel engine materials and design. The thermal stresses, carbon contamination, and system complexity were inherent to the high-rate EGR approach, not manufacturing defects that could be corrected through improved quality control or component upgrades. Dan Ustian's departure as CEO in August 2012 marked the end of Navistar's commitment to advanced EGR technology. His replacement, Troy Clark, immediately began evaluating alternatives, including partnerships with competitors who had successfully implemented SCR technology. In 2014, Navistar announced a strategic partnership with Cummins to adopt the SCR-equipped engines it had criticized for so long, marking a major shift away from its previous advanced EGR approach. The Max4 story offers profound lessons about technological risk and industry evolution. The decision to pursue advanced EGR represented a calculated gamble that internal solutions could avoid the complexity and cost of after-treatment systems. But the 2010 EPA standards proved too aggressive for combustion-based solutions, regardless of how sophisticated the engineering approach. But their downfall wasn't just technical. It was also a product of leadership's insistence on advanced EGR, a choice driven more by CEO Dan Ustian's personal conviction and a desire to stand apart from the SCR consensus than by hard data. This stubbornness was fueled by internal pressures to protect Navistar's engineering identity and avoid costly licensing fees, a gamble that not only delayed adoption of proven technologies, but also fostered a culture resistant to outside innovation, leaving the company isolated as competitors moved decisively forward. Today's even more stringent emission standards validate the industry's choice of after-treatment-based solutions. Current NOx limits are lower than the 2010 standards that challenged MaxForce, but manufacturers meet them reliably using advanced SCR systems that build on decades of development and real-world experience. The infrastructure concerns that drove Navistar's advanced EGR development have largely disappeared as DEF availability became ubiquitous and system reliability improved through continuous refinement.